Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to our lesson on density. Now, density is an important property of matter that we have to understand because this is going to explain a lot of things that we learn here in Earth Science. It's going to help us explain what happens with the weather and why the weather changes. It's going to help us explain why tectonic plates move to cause volcanoes or earthquakes and other different types of things going on. So density is a pretty important property that we need to understand. So let's get to it. If we take a look at density, density has two components to it. All matter is going to have a property called mass, and all matter is going to have a property called volume. Now, when you take a look at this equation, density is simply the mass divided by the volume of an object. Now, if you don't know what that means, we can break it up into simpler terms. So if we take a look up here, okay, mass is basically how much stuff is in an object. So however many atoms are in an object, that's going to help make up the mass of it. And then volume is simply the amount of space an object takes up. So let's take a look at our examples here at the bottom. I've created two cubes here, uh, one with 10 atoms in it and one with 60 atoms in it. Now each atom is going to have one gram of mass. Technically, in real science, atoms are going to have much smaller units for, for density, but for this purpose here, I'm just going to make it grams to make it easy. So if we take a look at this cube here, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 atoms at 1 gram each. So 10 atoms plus one gra at 1 gram each is going to give us a mass of 10. And then if we take a look here, the, there are 10 rows of 6, so you have 6 Atoms going across and 10 rows going down. So each atom here again is one gram. So 60 atoms with one gram of mass is going to give us a total of 60 grams. So that's how much stuff is in these cubes right now. 10 grams of stuff versus 60 grams of stuff. There's the mass. Now the volume is how much space it's going to be taking up. So we have to calculate how much space this cube is taking up in an area. We'll learn more about this later when we do more calculations, but However, there is a formula that you can use to calculate the volume of this cube. All right, you can use the formula of length times width times height to find the volume. So I'm going to take the length, which is 4 centimeters here, multiply it by the width, how wide it is, which is 4, so 4 times 4 is 16, and then the height, about how tall it is, it's going to come out to 64 cubic centimeters. Why is it CM3? Because I multiplied centimeters three times. And since we have the same dimensions here, we're going to put down 64 cubic centimeters there. Once you fill out this formula for density, all you need to do now is then calculate it. And you're gonna solve it like a regular division problem. So if I pull up our calculator here, what you're going to do is you're gonna simply just calculate the density by plugging it in as you see. So I'm gonna take my 10 grams here, that's gonna be the first number I plug in, hit divide, and then I'm gonna put in the denominator, 64. And as I hit enter, that's going to give us our answer that we actually saw about two seconds ago. Now, here in eighth grade science, what we'll probably do most of the time is round to our nearest tenths place. So the tenths place is the first digit after the decimal. So I have to take a look at the second number to follow my rounding rules. Since this number is five, we know five and up, we round the next number up. To, so what we're going to do is, instead of writing 0 0.1, this five is going to cause us to write it as 0 0.2. So our density for this block here is 0 0.2 grams per cubic centimeter. Now when you read the density of this object, it's basically telling you that this cube has 0 0.2 grams of matter per one cubic centimeter of space. Now when we take a look at this block here, we do the math, it's going to be obviously much bigger because the mass is bigger and it's closer to one. Density turns out to be 0 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter. So as we said in the last example here on the left, this equation is going to tell us that this block has 0 0.9 grams per one cubic centimeter. So this has more mass per cubic centimeter than that. And as a result, this number here is going to be a higher density than that number there. So this block has a higher density than that block. All right, so that's how you calculate the density, and that's what density of an object is. But sometimes what will happen is you're going to have materials, especially in the atmosphere, in the air, 
and um, underneath the ground and even in our ocean currents that have different densities and they're going to collide. And when they collide, they behave in particular ways. The one example I want to talk about is this. We all probably can remember the first time that we ever saw balloons floating up into a sky. I remember thinking about that and seeing that and thinking how cool it was that these balloons could float up in the sky. So when I went home, I got a balloon and I blew it up and when I blew it up and let it go it just fell to the ground and I was super disappointed and I'm sure a lot of you were too if that's ever happened to you. Let's talk about the science behind why that happens. Now the science behind that is going to be the property of density. Now there's a couple things that you need to know. One, helium gas is just made up of helium so the element of helium is all that's going to be made up here. Two, the sky or the atmosphere that surrounds us is made up of a bunch of gases, but primarily nitrogen and oxygen. Technically, it's about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then 1% of all the other gases just kind of thrown in there. But to make the math easier for us, I rounded it to an 80-20 split. So I have eight molecules here out of 10 for nitrogen and two molecules of oxygen out of 10. So that's our 80-20 split. And then your breath. Your breath, the air that comes out of your lungs when you blow up the balloon, it's a mixture as well. We breathe in a lot of nitrogen, but we don't ever use it. So, as a result, we blow out a lot of nitrogen that we took in. The oxygen is gone because, as we know, we use it for cell respiration to make energy. However, cell respiration helps make up a couple of waste gases that we get rid of when we blow out. For example, the, com the composition of your breath is mostly going to be nitrogen, and then the second highest concentrated gas will be carbon dioxide, and then your third highest gas is going to be water vapor, which is not a lot. We have 10 molecules here, 7 nitrogen, 2 carbon dioxide, and 1 water vapor. Now when we add up the masses together, and that's what these numbers represent, so every atom of helium has, four, has a mass of 4 atomic mass units, nitrogen has 28 atomic mass units, oxygen is 32, carbon dioxide has 44, water vapor has 18. When you add those things up, that's when you start to see the changes in the density. Now every single cube is going to have four centimeters by four centimeters by four centimeters, which we calculated on the last sheet as 64 cubic centimeters. So the volume is the same. But when we take a look at the helium, our total mass for helium is going to be 40. Why? Because I have a helium with an atomic mass of 40, and then there's 10 helium molecules. There's five there, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have 10 molecules at four atomic mass units each, so it's going to give me an atomic mass unit mass of 40. The sky, however, is a combination, so we have to do a little bit more math here. I have eight nitrogen molecules at 28 atomic mass units, so it's going to give me a total of 224 and then I have two oxygen molecules at 32 atomic mass units at 64 total. So once we combine the masses of those two gases together, we're going to get a total mass of 288 atomic mass units. And then, lastly, when we take a look at our balloon that we blew up, our combination of carbon dioxide and nitrogen and water vapor is going to give us a total mass of 302 atomic mass units. So once we have our masses set up and our volumes calculated, all we have to do is calculate the density. So when we calculate the density of helium, that comes out to 0.6 atomic mass units. Calculate the density of our atmosphere. Our atmosphere comes out to about 4.5 atomic mass units per cubic centimeter. And then lastly, we ca calculate the density of our breath with the gases involved, and that comes out to a density of 4.7 atomic mass units. Now why is this important? Well, this is important because this is what causes the balloons to behave in the way that they do. All right, When materials of one density are surrounded by a material with a greater density, the lower density material tends to rise and float up. So when you, feel, when you fill up a helium balloon and it's surrounded by the atmosphere, which has a density of 4.5, since 0.6 is much lighter, it gets lifted. So the lighter density gets lifted up. Now, when we take a look at the density of the air from our breath that we filled into a balloon, its density is 4.7. Its density is heavier or bigger than the density of the surrounding air around us, the, the atmosphere. So because the air in the balloon is heavier than the air around the balloon, the balloon will then sink to the ground and fall to the ground. As a result, we have our two balloons behaving two different ways because they both have two different densities. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for your time.